We have been telling you about the issues impacting neighborhoods in East Tampa, from the attractions that keep tourism booming to how gun violence touches each and every household. And 10 Tampa Bay anchor Josh Sidor, which is live at the state fairgrounds right now with more on one project that's stirring some controversy. Josh. Yeah, Dave, we're talking about a brand new multi-million dollar park and community center that is set to change the face of this East Tampa uh, area, but it is one that neighbors say is long overdue for a lift. We showed you the groundbreaking celebrations for Fair Oaks. This was just a few weeks ago, but some say that facelift should go beyond a place to play and into the pockets of the people who live in and represent this community. 10 Investigates Emerald Morrow is at Fair Oaks with the calls to have more diverse representation among contractors building the park to give an economic boost to groups historically left behind. Yes, we all know there can be big bucks in city contracts and sometimes there can be a pattern as to who gets them and who doesn't. So some are calling on the city to sign more black contractors to this particular job. But the city says there is a science to the selection and it's laid down in the law. The future of Fair Oaks Park. I like going down the slide. Belongs to kids like King Abdul Baker. That's a next generation. My grandson's a next generation. A generation to experience what Ralph Baker III says he never did. Never seen this coming. Never. Why not? Never seen it coming. It's hard to get something in, in the hood. Nice. In the hood. Nice. Because Fair Oaks Park is getting a fancy makeover. It's a very deserving community and uh, a much needed park here. A 33,000 square foot community center, basketball and pickleball courts, walking trails at a $34 million price tag. This is really a transformational moment for our community. A community the mayor says deserves a boost. In a zip code where crime is higher, the unemployment rate is double the national average, and nearly a quarter of this community lives under the poverty line. A park can provide healthy, safe, constructive outlets. That is what I know Fair Oaks will be, that, that positive impact in young people's lives. But is the process for rebuilding Fair Oaks really fair? Old boy network, I call it. I'm not hating on nobody, but they had a network. Michael Reeves owns a plumbing company in Tampa. He's done work for the city, but says for some, breaking through can sometimes be tough. Tampa, over the years, has done a very poor job as it relates to African-American black people in terms of getting work for the city. And I'm, I'm not just talking, the numbers speak for themselves. They do. This disparity study by Mason Tillman and Associates helps the city determine by law how much work can be set aside for minority contractors. It shows in many categories, African-American contractors in Tampa are disproportionately underutilized. They haven't been given an opportunity. They haven't been given a chance. Right now, the city says 14% of the Fair Oaks job is set to go to black contractors. But those like Lewis and Reeves say for a project this size, in this neighborhood, it should be more. A lot of the black contractors, they hire from the community. They give people an opportunity, a chance that would not have gotten that chance and help provide them a skill. But Mayor Castor says the city's decision is not arbitrary. The individuals that are making those statements um, are making them without the information uh, that is available. Information that is a little bit complicated. Here's how the city came up with their decision. Bear with me. Right now, Skanska is the main or prime contractor for Fair Oaks. The city set a goal for subcontractors to get 30% of this job based on all the available tasks. The city also set a race-based goal, which is allowed but only legal when there is proof a disparity exists. Now, we've got to do a little bit of math, and according to the city, there are 248 city-certified firms available to do that 30% of the work we just talked about. Of that 248, 117 are black-owned. That's 47%. 131 are small local businesses, and that's about 
47% of 30 is a little under half, so about 14. 14% 14 of the project should go to black contractors. The city says right now, nothing more by law. We have to ensure that we are growing small businesses, minority women-owned businesses from the ground up, providing these types of opportunities for them so that they can continue to grow and prosper. Prosper. We're qualified. We're qualified, able, and ready to do the work. So entrepreneurs like Reeves <laughs> and kids like King Abdul Baker see themselves fairly reflected in all parts of their community. Emerald Morrow, 10 Investigates. One item of note here, the city's disparity study is now almost two decades old and 10 Investigate has raised questions about whether the study is outdated and if new data would change the percentage of black contractors on the job today. We are waiting to hear back.